Well, good evening. We thought we would start off tonight by talking about a few uh, general tips for recording um, that you can use for uh, Panopto and for VoiceThread. Um, so the first thing when you're uh, doing any video recording, you want to think about lighting. Yes. And so we've got an example of, of bad lighting. And actually, this happens a lot when people uh, record with their laptop on their lap um, as they're sitting in their living room at the couch or something, and they don't think uh, what the lighting looks like. So we're going to show you some really bad lighting. So if you had your laptop turned on and you have that strong light coming from below, you can get kind of that, that creepy, weird Halloween lighting, and um, it's, it's not what you want to have um, in your presentation. Right. It ruins the experience. Um, so the best thing you can do is um, sit in a well-lit area. So even if you are using your laptop lighting around, you can still um, be uh, brighter than, the, than what your laptop is. Yeah. Another thing to think about is just simply to prepare a little beforehand. Write out your thoughts beforehand to, uh, about what you're going to say so that you feel comfortable. Maybe practice them a little before you do the recording. With um, VoiceThread, it's very easy to watch a preview of what, what you've done and then re-record after the fact. Um, you can re-record as many times as you like until you achieve what you want. Yep, and with um, Panopto, once you've recorded, you upload your video. So the more you're prepared um, and the more comfortable you feel, the better you will be on the first take, and then you uh, won't have to redo that recording before you upload. Another thing to consider is the audio. Um, it's a very important part of any presentation. If it is uh, too loud or, or um, choppy or confusing, it can really um, damage your presentation. Definitely. And again, if you're using a laptop like we were talking about the light, um, also be aware if you're using an internal microphone in your laptop that it will pick up um, uh, sounds like if you're typing on the keyboard or even if you're holding your laptop, it can pick up those sounds. So just be aware of that when you're recording. Okay, so um, for Panopto, I'll, I'll kind of go ahead and go over a little bit of both. Um, how to find your Panopto lectures, how to, um, uh, and, and some of the features that you can use while viewing, and then we'll go into how you can create a recording and, and upload to a Panopto folder as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. See, are we sharing? Now I think we're sharing. Okay, so I'm in my Blackboard course space, and this um, looks uh, much like yours uh, will for your class. Um, and I, I would, I want to show you first how you can find the Panopto lectures if your instructor is uploading them. Um, so sometimes instructors will create a shortcut here in the sidebar. Um, they may uh, label it something like Panopto or lecture videos, but if they don't have a shortcut for you, um, you can always find um, the Panopto lectures by going to Tools in the sidebar. Once you're in Tools, Panopto content here, you can click on that. And then that will take you to all the lectures and video material that um, your, is available for your class. Once you're here, you just click on the session and it will open in a, a new tab and you'll be able to view that recording. Um, I have a couple of, of examples here and I wanted to give you a few features that you can use um, when you're watching um, your Panopto recording. So um, some faculty, uh, when they are doing a PowerPoint presentation, they'll actually um, capture their PowerPoint slides. And what that means is that it actually creates an index along the side. So as they scroll through to the next slide, um, it will take the uh, title or the first few words of that slide, um, and it will index it here with the time in the video. And that allows you to um, quickly navigate through the video. So if there was a um, a portion that you wanted to go back and review and you knew where that slide was, you can just quickly um, get to that in the timeline. Um, if you, uh, and this is under the content slide on the, on the sidebar here. Um, another thing that you can do is you can take your own notes. Um, so these notes are things that only you will see because it's linked to um, your username. And uh, any point in the video, um, you just move to that point in the timeline down here on your slider, and then you can actually create a note. And it creates that whatever note that you had, 
and the time in the video that it is. And when you click on that, it'll take you right to that point. So if I'm here, if I go back, it'll take me right back there. Um, I can also create a bookmark, um, much the, the same thing as notes. Um, and you're able to actually view these bookmarks as you go through. So, And again, uh, this is just helping you to um, go back to important um, parts in the lecture or if you want to be able to review. And only you will see these notes. The other thing that you can do is if you aren't quite sure, um, you know you want to go back and review something, but you can't find that slide or you're not quite sure where it is in the video, uh, this search box up here allows you to search for text in the recording. Uh, so if you knew um, that you were looking for uh, a certain topic um, or you could um, remember uh, like concept maps here, then it will show me everywhere where concept maps comes up in the slides and I can um, go through to each of these and see if this is where um, if this is the content that I'm looking for. Um, another thing that I, I do like to point out, um, so this instructor decided to only do PowerPoint and video, but some instructors, or I'm sorry, PowerPoint and audio, but some instructors will do um, video, audio, and they will do a PowerPoint as well. Um, so usually in the playback, it looks like this. This smaller window um, is the uh, what Panopto calls the primary window. Um, and you can make that larger if you needed to for any reason by clicking this box with the arrows in the upper right hand corner. Um, and you can also make these the secondary video where um, things like the slides or uh, the computer desktop is. You can also make that bigger as well if you need to. Um, one thing to point out is that um, you can see different um, uh, views down here in the secondary window and you get to them by clicking on um, the selection here at the bottom. So sometimes uh, if you have multiple screens that you're recording, uh, you would see uh, screen one and screen two down here or you could go back to the slides. Um, one thing to point out is if your instructor annotates over their slides, um, if you're on the slide option, you wouldn't be able to see that annotation. In order to do that, you would need to go to the screen setting. Um, because it's actually capturing that desktop where they're making those annotations. Um, so that is some of the options um, and features that you have available to you when you're viewing um, a Panopto video. And I'd just like to go quickly over how you can create your own presentation as well. Um, so the best way if uh, to be able to download the Panopto recorder as well as create your own presentation is to go back in through your course space where you can find your um, the videos that your instructor made. So again, if you were at the home, if you were at the home page, you would go to tools and then Panopto content down here. Um, and once you get there, sometimes um, Sometimes instructors will make separate assignment folders for you. Sometimes they'll have you put um, the recording into the main folder. Wherever they've directed you to upload your recording to, you'll want to navigate to that, um, to that folder. And once you're there, this create button up here um, in the, at the top bar, you actually want to say create and record a new session. Um, so um, if you do not have Panopto downloaded on your computer, uh, this is where you can download it. We ha they have options for 32-bit and 64-bit windows, um, and then also for the Mac OS. Um, and if you, if you don't know uh, which type of operating system you have for Windows, 32-bit will always work. But if um, you download the 64, if if, you, if it doesn't work for your computer, nothing's going to happen. It won't harm your computer. You just won't be able to install it. Um, so once you've downloaded it, um, Panopto will open. And uh, this is the recorder that you will, you will see. So there's a couple of things that you need to be sure that you set. One, you want to make sure that um, your Panopto video is going to upload to that correct course fol folder. And um, you double check that here in the folder settings. 
Now, the nice thing about going through your Blackboard course space is if you navigate to that correct folder um, that your instructor would like you to upload the video to, um, that will automatically populate there. But it is good to double check because um, once you record, um, you automatically upload to that folder that you've selected. Um, next is the name field. And so you can, uh, it always defaults to just the date and time of your recording, but you can rename that whatever you'd like, um, whatever your presentation um, or video session you'd like to call it. Um, next here in the primary sources, um, this is where you go, where you will select your video. So I'm going to turn off my video here um, and collaborate, but you'll, you'll see me again soon in Panopto. So in this video drop down box, this is where you'll select which, um, which video you would like to use. And then the audio, uh, same thing, you select the uh, audio you'd like to use. And you'll know you have the right audio. Um, you can see over here, I see the, the meter. Um, I can adjust the volume of my, of my microphone here with this slider. And generally, you always want to have your audio here uh, um, in the green or up to the yellow meter. If you're up in the red, it's going to peak and it's going to sound distorted. And like Theron was saying before, that's um, not good for your presentation. It kind of uh, takes people out of your presentation because they're listening more to the quality of the audio than what you're saying. This quality is for your actual audio and video recording. I'll normally always um, put it up to ultra. Um, unless your computer is um, really old, uh, most computers can handle this, um, this uh, recording quality. So again, um, primary source. This was, in the viewer, the primary source right here. So that's where your video will show up. Next is our secondary sources. So this is when you uh, are playing back your secondary sources, they show up here in the player. Um, and this is where you can decide if you have a PowerPoint presentation, if you wanna capture your PowerPoint. So um, much like our instructor here, you, your PowerPoints would be indexed so people, so that your instructor and other students could um, search the video and, and, and jump to important parts as well. Um, capture main screen. Um, so this capture main screen and capture secondary screen. Um, right now on this computer, I have two monitors up, and so that's why I have the option to capture both screens. Um, if you're just doing a PowerPoint presentation and you do not want to have your desktop recorded at the same time, you can just uncheck that. Um, if you, you know, might be showing something else uh, besides a PowerPoint, like a YouTube video, or you have a PDF that you bring up, um, then you want to make sure to capture that main screen so that will be recorded as well. Um, once you record, there's um, a couple of different um, hotkeys that you can use to make recording a little bit easier. If you ever forget what it is, you can just hover over the button and it will show you as it says record um, F8. So if I hit that, record F8, I'll start recording. Um, as I hover over pause if I need to, it's F9, so I could pause that recording and you can always resume again. And then stop, if I hover over that, that's F10. So once I'm done with my presentation, I can stop. And it's gonna ask me, uh, do you, would you like to delete and record again or would you like to upload that recording. And again, it's telling me I'm going to upload to that folder that I selected earlier um, before I began recording. So I'll upload. And if I go back to um, my Panopto videos and refresh the page, I can see that my, re that my recording is being uploaded um, and it's, it's processing. So that um, is a quick overview of um, how you can view Panopto and also um, how you can um, create your own recordings and upload um, if that's part of your um, course material. Um, so I was saving questions till the end. Do you want to hop in with VoiceThread? Okay. 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 Unless you want to ask questions about Panopto right now. Sure. Or do you, does anybody have any questions? You can go ahead and uh, type them in the chat now. Oh, yes. So um, again, 
Uh, yeah, F, F8. So the question is, does F10 um, stop the recording? So yes, the, the function keys are F8 to stop recording, F9 to pause or resume, and then F10 to um, stop the recording. Um, and one thing I thought of while we're on that, um, sometimes uh, people will like this feature if you go to settings. So I'm in my Panopto recorder here. And if I go to settings, um, minimize when recording this selection right here. If I check that and save it, that will actually, what it will do is once I start recording, it will minimize that recorder for me. Otherwise, if I'm um, using my PowerPoint, I have to push record and then manually minimize. So it kind of depends on your workflow and what you'd like to do, but that is a setting that you can either turn off here under settings. Voice thread. Um, I see that some of you have used it for presentations and some of you have just used it to view uh, faculty lectures. That's great. I'm going to go through both procedures so that you have, um, so that you can learn maybe a little bit more about it. Um, on the screen right now, you see an introductory activity. This is a really common use of VoiceThread. Um, it allows you to give an introduction that's a little more intimate than just uh, typing in the threaded discussion. Um, sometimes faculty will embed uh, the voice thread window as you see here, and sometimes they'll just provide a link. Either way, you can click on the link, for example, and it will open the window in this way. Um, I'm gonna take you through a couple of the different controls um, that you see on the page when you open it. Um, one of them is here in the top right. This um, will, it's a little slow right now. Okay, so this will create a full screen view for you. And because when you have that full screen, sometimes you might want to zoom in on images. And if you click this little plus symbol, it allows you to zoom in really close. And this is really good for details of images. It's not that great for PowerPoint lectures, but um, really good for um, large images. You can zoom in and then you can scroll by just clicking and dragging on the image. Okay. So the other thing that you see here is um, in this left-hand window, you see um, the comments that have been made for, from different members of the class. And it's still trying to load, so I'll go into some of the um, tools here that you can use. Um, I am an administrator, so I, I have some controls that um, you don't have. For example, this trash can, you're not able to delete other students' posts, but I am. Um, it's a very powerful feeling to have that. Um, here, um, the CC button, that um, provides closed captioning if it is available on the video, if it's been provided. Um, this button, allows you to have um, kind of a threaded discussion. If you click this, you can make a comment directly under the, the person that you're doing this for. So if I click that, it will um, allow me to comment directly under that person. Um, so you see when I click that, it makes my icon, this is my symbol, and it has a little line that's directly underneath the person. And if I make a comment, they'll see that um, under their um, post. So that's a kind of a nice way to um, make a post that's directly in response to someone else. You see right here in the, um, in the commenting section, it tells you that you're making a reply to Mark um, when you make a comment. And so the commenting, I'll click out of this for a second. Okay, so usually what you see is this little symbol. Hi, my name is Mula. I'm gonna close this for a second. And you see this little symbol, and all you have to do is just click the plus symbol and these controls come up. These are each diff a different type of commenting in VoiceThread. 
The first one is by text. So if you click it, you'll see you have a little text window and you can type a comment in text. Um, the next one is by phone. You can call in your comment. You just click the phone and then you enter your phone number and it will call you and it will give you a little prompt and then you can tell, you can make your comment over the phone. The third way to do it is um, by audio. And if you click that, it will count down. And once it starts, you'll see a little stop recording sign because that's the next thing you might want to do is stop recording. It also shows you this little pencil. If you click that, you can click different colored pencils and you can point to things or make marks as you're talking and it will record those. I'm going to stop recording. And um, when you stop your recording, you can either cancel it or you can save it. And when you, it also does an automatic replay of what you've just done. So you can look, you can watch it and you can decide, do I like that or not? If you don't like it, you can just redo and redo it and make another one. And then if you like it, you can click save and it will save it and create that little box up in the left with your comment. I'm going to cancel this one. Um, so that is the commenting feature. And that gives you a little eye of, of an idea. If you have an introductory activity that you have to do, this gives you an idea of how you might do that. Up in the top left, um, you will notice that you have some controls here also. I'm not going to go into each one of these. And these are not controls you will necessarily have, but you may have. Um, sharing, embedding, doing things like that. I'm going to show you how to do that in a little bit in a little while though and, and when you create your own presentations. Um, another thing here uh, on the controls that you may find useful is you can change the speed that um, you listen to the comments. You can speed it up or slow it down. So you can go four times speed if you really want to uh, have a good laugh or you can take it down to 0.5 speed if you really want it to speak slowly. Um, down here on the bottom, you'll see these little hash marks. Each of these hash marks is a, is a comment from one of the participants. And you can kind of navigate in that way also. Um, so um, it's, it, it kind of supplements this view on the left. OK, well, if nobody has any questions, then I'm going to move on to creation if you're ever asked to create um, a video in VoiceThread. If you notice, I don't know if you know, but everyone has their own voice thread. And it's and the way to access that is to go to httpswsu.voicethread.com. So if you go there, you're gonna see not exactly what you see here because I have a huge space. Um, a lot of different people use my space for different things. Um, but you'll see basically these same controls, home, browse, and create. And you'll see your name here on the right-hand side. So if you're asked to create a voice thread, you would just create, you would just click this create button. And the first thing it asks you is, what media do you want to add? You can add videos, you can add audio files, you can add uh, PDFs, you can add images. I'm going to click here and I'm going to go to my computer. So I'm just going to select all these images and open them. So as soon as you do that, it starts to download. And it also asks you for a title for your presentation. I'm not going to worry about the title right now. But you see it downloaded all the images. You could also just download an entire PowerPoint if you like. And it would, it would download each of the slides of your PowerPoint. Once those slides are downloaded, you can grab them and reorder them like this. And you can also. Um, give them a title. You can add a link 
to the slide, um, and then you can save it. Um, another thing that you can do is you can click on a slide and you can click comment. Once you do that, it brings the slide up and it provides you with a commenting um, button so that you can do the same thing that I showed you previously with your slide. You can add text, you can add a phone com comment, you can add audio, you can add a video comment, or you can do a file upload. I didn't show you the video comment, so I'm gonna show you that right now. It'll count down, and then it will have a little video window on the left-hand side and it, as it records you, and it will provide the same tools, a pen, and as you talk, you can make marks, and then when you're finished, you can click Stop Recording. So you can go through each of your si slides, basically, and add your narration, which is a really nice feature. Um, if you notice on the right here, we have these little boxes. What that does is that takes you back to your view of your different slides. Um, so anytime you want to go back and forth, you can click that button to work through your slides. You can also click these arrows to just go through each one individually as a full screen image. And once again, you have the uh, plus and negative symbols. So you can really zoom in and really get a detailed view. OK, so now I'm going to go through some of these other controls. Um, well, first, in terms of this editing, does anyone have any questions about editing your slides? Please type them in the text box if you do. OK. Okay, so another thing you may be interested in is, are these controls up here in the top left? When you click that, you have a lot of different things that you can do. And the primary thing you're going to want to do probably is share your presentation once you've finished. When you click the share button, you have a lot of different controls. I would recommend the one that, that I use and most people use 99% of the time is basic. And so I would click that tab and just select the link. You can click, copy the link by clicking copy link and it will, it'll be copied to your clipboard. And so a, a couple of ways you could share this, you could share this in a threaded discussion or you could um, share it in a blog. You could also, sometimes we have faculty who ask students to um, submit their VoiceThread presentation in a Dropbox in Blackboard. So you just go into Blackboard, and you, where you usually submit text, you would just post your link to your VoiceThread. So in that way, they can view your VoiceThread presentation and then um, give it a grade through Blackboard. OK? Other ways that you can share are you can embed the um, VoiceThread presentation. You could embed it once again in a, in a web page, in a blog. Um, you just copy this text, um, this script, and you, type, and you paste it um, in the HTML window. Um, you can change the size of the window before you save it if you want a special size of your window. And then, once again, click here to save the embed tag. You can copy the embed code here, and it will go to your clipboard. So once again, the, the basic way to do this is the best, I think, is just to link, copy the link. Um, and as you copy that link, be sure to select allow anyone to access and allow anyone to comment. No one can. Act, no one's usually able to access it unless they know the URL. So it's pretty safe to do it this way. If you don't want people to comment, you can just deselect it. If you, on the other hand, want a more secure version of your presentation, you can select secure, and then if you're a member of a group, you can add it to a group. 
and you can identify how the members of that group can access the um, your presentation. You can say they can just view it, or you can say they can view it and comment, or you can give them permission to act to access and comment and edit. I would suggest not allowing them to edit in case unless it's really really something you want to do because that can go really bad. Um, the other thing you can do is you can select from your comments. Um, I'm sorry, from your contacts, and you can select an individual person. And in the same way, when you select Abby, for example, you can just you can identify how she interacts with the presentation. So this is a good way if you wanted to have a group of people that are interacting with your voice thread, you can add individuals, you could add individuals of your group, and you can give them each editing access. Okay. And once you do that, you can click share, and it will sh it will share this with the people that you've given um, access to. You can also click this if you want to uh, send an email to them. Um, the other way that you can share the secure link is you can get a link and um, just send this to them, and um, you can identify if you want them to access or comment once again. And when you when they click on this, they'll have those permissions to do that. I'm going to go back and show you a few other examples of how you might use um, how we've used this in different courses. Um, here's an example of a really common use of VoiceThread. An instructor might use a power, create a PowerPoint, okay. and um, she will add all of her slides just like this. This is a really good way to navigate through the slides. Click on the little boxes, and then you can go to specific sl slides and view them. If you're given permission to do so um, by the instructor, then you can ask questions on each slide using the comment feature. So you might see something and you might click the audio comment. It will count you down. And then you can say, hey, what about this? This is confusing. Can you give me some more information about that? And you can stop recording. And once you save that, it'll create the little box on the left-hand side, and they can click on that and then respond to you. Um, another thing that we've done with these, um, we have in our vet school, we have biomechanics courses where um, people view the movement of animals. And so in this case, what you can do is you can, you can make a comment and you can scrub through. You can use this little controller and you can find the place where you want to make a comment and then you can comment. And it will go right to that point and you can, and you can make a comment as you're making drawings. Um, which is really nice to be able to isolate a really specific point in an animal's movement to make um, a, an observation. It's, it's a really neat feature. And once again, you can zoom in and you can scroll um, to specific places. I'm going to cancel that. Um, another thing we've done um, that you can do with your VoiceThread presentation is you can create, do, do a, a presentation, a stand-up presentation. And um, one way you can do this, I'll show you, is uh, using the um, one of the, the video tool in VoiceThread. I'll show you how that works here really quick. OK, so when you click Create, and you are prompted to add media, one of the things you can do is use your webcam uh, for a photo or for a video. So if you wanted to do a presentation where your video filled this entire screen, you could just do the webcam video. And it would count down. 
and then it would put you in this center window and you could do your recording and upload it and then it, and save it and it would create a file one of your screens would be your video in a large screen so then when people view that let me see here they would see a large version wow and then it would put you in this center okay so they would see a lot a large screen version of you okay another thing that we do in the music school this is i think a really neat use of voice thread we have um um music that uh students can view and they can make comments at certain points in the music and they can say for example um they can highlight a, a specific chord progression they can identify what the emotional change was at that point how the notes led to that feeling it's a really interesting use of voice thread. Thanks so much for coming, everybody, tonight. We appreciate it and have a good night. Thanks.